Two years ago, when the druid was revealed to not be something that got rid of the ranger's pet, several rangers were disappointed. At the same time, a similar thing was happening with the thieves, one of the other medium armor classes. See, when people who played thief heard about the elite specialization system and the fact that we could get a new weapon, many of them weren't looking for a melee staff that was acrobatics focused, though the daredevil of two years ago was pretty great. Many of them instead were looking for a rifle. And that's exactly what Path of Fire has given. Path of Fire gives thieves their rifles, thieves become dead eyes, and become basically snipers. There's also a huge amount of build craft opportunity here. So today I'm going to talk to you guys about the Path of Fire dead eyes. The dead eye is a thief who stalks their targets with patience and brutal accuracy. They use a rifle to snipe at long range, marking targets to harass them with harmful effects. Their mastery of shadow magic lets them cast cantrips, which gain bonuses when used against marked targets, or as their malice increases. Adding a rifle to uh, an elite specialization uh, and specifically designing it around super long ranged one shots is a scary prospect. A bit like how I would have expected them to be sort of conservative with Weaver uh, and not give too many skills and they went in the complete opposite direction. The same thing happened here with the Deadeye. You'd think that they'd be scared of introducing something that adds these massive one shots that are difficult to counter and well they said no, people want to play snipes, let's let them play snipes. There is some counterplay on the Deadeye and if you like the sound of that play you're gonna be thrilled with this if you hate the sound of that in world versus world you might be really worried about this uh, but I think the way they've done it is proven to be quite interesting and there's something to be said for really honing in on exactly what it was that the players wanted and giving it their all I think some uh, thief players who prefer the daredevil style of things might be disappointed that now a range spec is coming in the game but at the end of the day all elite specializations need to exist among one another and adding a really potent reigned option for this class was a good place to go to because thieves really haven't had that not at a great range They've had pistol pistol, which has always suffered a bit They've had their short bow, which has also got is more of a utility thing in my opinion than anything to do with damage and Now especially for the single target kind of uh, offense. They finally filled that role uh, so the Dead Eyes main weapon, as I've talked about, is a rifle. If you happen to have the 2012 legendary rifle, the Predator, this might be your time to equip it. As for the rest of us, we'll have to try and find something that's vaguely snipey uh, in some other way. Uh, it's, people have actually played very well with Fashion Wars 2 since this Elite Spec came in. I will add that as little interest as most people may have in it. Uh, this is a specialization that doesn't just, go, doesn't just get rifle, but its utility skills are actually cantrips. So cantrips came from the Elementalist. I believe the new Deadeye runes give two might on cantrip use when I last saw. They were also really heavy power and a bit of ferocity on them. Um, so there are some synergies there with the cantrips. Uh, once those runes come in, unless they've been changed. Uh, but generally, they're all instant activation. And the utilities, much like we saw on the Hollowsmith, they all play with the primary new mechanic that the Elite Specialization is dealing with. With the Hollowsmith, it was you build a lot of heat, and then the utilities will get stronger with lots of heat. On this guy, we build something called Malice, and the utility skills get stronger with that. I really think that the first place we should go to to explain how the Dead Eye works is to talk about Malice straight away. Uh, these five black dots here these are potential malice stacks and our goal as a dead eye is to build as many of them up as possible the more of these we have the more damage we do the more utility we get the more scary we are you'll also notice that our f1 ability we haven't gained like an f2 or an f3 or f4 sorry but uh our f1 has changed instead of steel we now have a different ability altogether it's called dead eyes mark and what does it say it says, mark a single target to generate stacks of malice over time. Malice generates faster and increases your damage against the marked target as long as you've recently struck it. And then we lose all malice when the mark ends or when this skill gets recast. So what has happened here is the regular thief would pop this, uh, move into melee, they would blink in, 
and they would steal a, sp steal a special item from their foe, and uh, then they'd hopefully use that item to try and gain an advantage and, and beat the crap out of that foe in melee. The Deadeye is a ranged character, and it really doesn't want to blink in. So instead we get Deadeye's mark that doesn't have that shadow step component on it. I'm going to press F1 here from all the way back here, and you can see that we can use this mark from 1500 range, which is huge. I'm going to show you the max range. It's about here, okay? We're going to mark this light golem from all the way over here. And you'll see several things happen. We dazed, we inflicted poison, and we inflicted weakness. Those are all traits. We also gave ourselves might, fury, vigor, and swiftness. That's all traits that comes from core stuff. Okay, so for example, uh, if we look at trickery here, here we have sleight of hand. Stealing also dazes the target. We're not technically stealing anymore, we're marking. But these tra traits count. The, the wording is a bit off and they don't seem to have cared so much this generation to uh, fix that. Uh, bountiful theft. We steal boons from our target when we press F1. Well, we also steal boons when we press F1 to mark them. Uh, we also gain thrill of the crime and all of these different things. They all still work. And in a lot of ways, the new mark ability, because it doesn't move us in, is actually quite useful. We also get mug, which is why we did some damage there. In a lot of ways, this is actually really a bit more useful. Uh, when you think about being a sniper, you're probably going to want to steal boons from your target so that they don't have Aegis or protection or things like that on them before you do your big spike of damage. And that's still possible with the mark ability. All those old synergies are there, leading to this enormous tooltip. That's why we steal three boons, damage, and just, you know, as you read down. But the important part is we gain malice. You can see there at the bottom, it says that this will last 25 seconds and we gain malice passively every four seconds. So, hold on, we're gonna have to move because people are aggroing uh, at least uh, these random NPCs on us and attacking us and making this quite hard. So here, we're gonna mark, uh, we need we need a golem that no one's attacking. Man, the, the mists need to be a lot larger. Oh, this would be very cool if we can get it in range from all the way over here. That's not gonna work, but it's fine. We'll come over to these golems. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark this golem and what it will do is it will start generating malice for us as long as it's alive. We really need a golem that no one's attacking. Please, 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 please. Anyone, anywhere. Do we have a single golem that nobody is attacking? Nope. There's just hollow smiths beating the crap out of everything constantly. Oh, no. Here we go. We can do it on the indestructible golem. That This works very well. Okay. The indestructible golem to the rescue. So many of these things have been dying. So what we're going to do is we're going to mark the indestructible golem here. And it's going to start building malice for us. Okay, so if you look at our UI here above our health bar, slowly we're getting these kind of raging fiery orbs. It's coming very slowly, and that's because we're not attacking the target. So what the devs want you to do is continuously attack so that you can build malice at a faster rate, at an actual reasonable rate. After 25 seconds, so after all this time we've only got uh, 5 stacks here, after 25 seconds, seconds, eventually our mark will wear off, as you can see. It just wore off and we disappeared. This appears as an active effect over our skill bar down here. Can you see? Dead eyes gazed. We have marked a target for death. It ends early if our target dies. The indestructible golem will never die. Um, so we get 25 seconds to make use of this. Uh, but the, what the devs don't want you doing is marking someone and then just camping in permanent stealth forever and getting super high benefit out of that. So what they're trying to uh, encourage you to do is to mark someone and then attack them uh, and continuously attack them, which will reveal you and make you vulnerable. But it also means that uh, you'll build your malice a lot quicker. So that's really the thing you want to do. So here's what it looks like now building malice while we're auto attacking. And I, I think we should be seeing that the malice is coming in a bit quicker. Or at least the tooltip suggests it does. Malice generates faster and increases your damage against the marked target as long as you've recently struck it. So there you go. It doesn't feel like it's moving too much faster, but I'll take their word for it. So if the target dies, the mark ends uh, and we lose all of our damage buffs. Or if we decide that we want to take out a kill contract on someone else like this heavy golem here. Uh, that mark also ends and we have to go back to starting on malice So you can't build a ton of malice on one target and then instantly one shot someone else without them seeing it And again, this is the devs trying to add a little bit of counterplay So here we have max malice as soon as that first golem dies we lose it all again And this is a, 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 a check in place to try and stop pe people feeling terrible For randomly getting sniped out of nowhere from 100 to 0 even on reasonably tanky builds in uh, Particularly wild versus wild. I think that this has been the main concern for them but that's the idea. You take a contract out on your foe and uh, you fight them and fight them and fight them until you go for the big kill. And that's quite a lot of damage. So we get five stacks here. Each is worth 3% damage. So we've got 15% extra damage just because we have that person marked. Then beyond that, all of this extra juicy stuff that we get from the fact that, frankly, this is a steal. We can also, by the way, still gain new items. 
So this is a big change from Regular Thief. Regular Thief has a selection of items that you can take. PvPers will be more than familiar with them. You always get the same item depending on the class. So a thief, uh, so sorry, a necromancer if you steal from, you get a skull that fears. A uh, Another thief you steal from, you get a little uh, stealth for yourself and a blind around you. I think it's a blind around you. Uh, if you steal from a revenant, you get that big, really hard hitting projectile. If you steal from a warrior, you get the swirly axe thing. In PvE, there's even more items you can steal and there's a bit more RNG on it. You can steal like elixirs that make you invulnerable and so forth. Well, um, for the Deadeye, they've changed that up and there's different things we gain based on who we mark. So the flavor of it is no longer that we're stealing and it's a bit weird. But so if we uh, check this out here, we have steel resistance. So we gain resistance and we apply torment on our marked target. The duration increases for each malice stack we have. So this is getting stronger the more malice we have. And this one's some torment. And we get to apply it there. But you'll see that this actually expires quite quickly in the two. That was using the ammunition mechanic. We actually could have double cast that, I think. So yeah, it actually used the ammunition mechanic. So that was, uh, we had a maximum count of two. But so there's a, a whole variety of those new abilities. And I think we can mouse over them by going here and right clicking perhaps. Oh no, we can't. Uh, perhaps I'll link to you guys in the comments a full list of those because I'm not sure the best way to actually show you all of them. I think people have generally said they're a little bit more flavorless and a bit more bare bones than the original set on The Thief. And that sounds a little bit disappointing to me, but I haven't really been able to judge them for myself just yet. But so that's another little change up and that's the way that they're dealing with the mark. Now, the mark gives us just a little bit more damage as we build Malice, but on the rifle specifically, you'll really see how all this comes together because the rifle has a giant nuke that does lots more damage based on Malice we get. And in fact, when we look at the rifle here, what we're going to see is the entire thing is about building up that giant kill shot. We're actually going to start by looking at the skill 5. Skill 5 is really fun. Uh, it's an ammunition thing. So we have two charges on it right now. It's called Neil, and it's one of the weirdest skills that's ever come into Guild Wars 2. It's really interesting. Become immobile and gain access to Neil skills, which have increased projectile velocity. You can still dodge roll while kneeling, but Neil is cancelled if you swap weapons or if you get CC'd. So essentially you get to go prone on the dead eye. It's a very fun idea. Uh, so we're going to toggle into the five and because it's got ammunition, we can do this quite quickly. Once we kneel, if we press the five again, we, it's called free action. It will cleanse, off of, cleanse us of movement impairing conditions and let us stand back up. Okay. And then we can kneel again. And then we can stand up. And there is a cooldown on this. If you spam it too much, you'll see the ammunition mechanic kicks in and we've got to wait a little bit. But generally speaking, you can stand up, sit down. S uh, going prone like this or getting down on your nails, it's not fully prone, is it? Uh, what this essentially has done is it's increased our range massively. By default, what we're looking at are 1200 range attacks that are fairly slow projectiles, as you can see here. Everything that the rifle does is 1200 range and 1200 range is a good range. But uh, they're also fairly slow. Now, if we kneel down, though, we can come all the way up. This says if we kneel down, we go from 1200 range to 1500 range. And not only that, but it doubles the speed that our projectiles move at. Christ knows how that's supposed to work mechanically, but still. So our, our projectiles, uh, as projectiles on a rifle, they're very easy to mitigate, right? You can deflect them, you can block them, you can reflect them, you can do just about everything under the sun. So having that increased velocity is really quite nice. Uh, and you'll notice very carefully in the background here, the devs put a very interesting thing into the engine. You can see this blue ring. This blue ring is showing us our maximum range. And just look at how massive that is. If you imagine there's terrain here, we can shoot people all around in this range. We can shoot people all the way up there as long as we're not line of sighted by rocks and stuff. And all the way down here, we can aim at these golems all the way over here. We can perch out in our nest a long way away. So if this is the gameplay that appeals to you, they have absolutely got you covered. This golem is only just slightly out of range. All the rest of these, we can shoot and we can trigger damage on. So that's the benefit of kneeling. But the downside of kneeling is if I use WASD right now, I'm actually not going anywhere. I can't. It's disabled. The only way for me to physically move around is via dodge roll. So this is sort of the reverse of Mirage. We're now reliant on a dodge roll to move around. So like so. So there I was kneeling and I dodged forward and I could move. Now I'll dodge to the left. And I can move and I'm going to start kneeling again now. I can dodge to the right when we get our endurance back. So you're very limited while kneeling down in just how much you can move. If somebody comes to aggress you, you're going to probably dodge back and then you're going to immediately go into free action and try and bail. And it's a totally different kind of experience to what you're going to have been used to, especially 
over the past two years where most thieves have been playing on daredevils that have had incredible mobility. So you'll see the difference between the Deadeye and the Daredevil. I think this is a great contrast, right? The last generation specialization was all about melee damage and heavy movement. This one's about ranged damage and limited movement, and I really like that. So, uh, this is, uh, this is what kneeling down does. So we've got four skills to actually do damage. Well, you've been watching the auto attack roll by for a long time. Deadly aim. We fire a shot that inflicts vulnerability on our target, and we get additional vulnerability if they're marked. So when I press my F1 and I take out my contract to kill this guy, uh, and the uh, mark is at 1500 range, so that if you're in range for your rifle, you're in range to mark them. Uh, if we do that, we get all this extra vulnerability. So all these skills, basically the skill 4 is a giant nuke, which we'll look at in a second. The skill 1, 2, and 3 are all about preparing for that nuke. So vulnerability means we do more damage to our target. So we stack lots of vulnerability with the auto, lots of fun. Then we have the skill 2, where we fire a bullet that grants us boons and inflicts conditions on our target. Now those conditions, though, very importantly, is immobilize, and it gives us fury. So when we do our big snipe, we really want to critically hit with it, right? The difference between critting and not critting is massive. So we want every opportunity we can to crit. Now, if we are traded for thrill of the crime with one of our core specializations, that's not too hard because we can just mark and we gain fury when we mark. But some people won't want to run thrill of the crime. They want other specializations. They want to be a bit freer. Uh, they want to open up the build craft a bit. So the skill two gives you that fury as well if you really need it. It also both cripples and immobilizes. So it does two things that slow people down. Um, and so what that means is even if someone can cleanse the Amob, they might still be crippled and still vulnerable now. They have tons of vulnerability, they're movement impaired because you've landed both, and they're, they're getting primed for the kill. Then we've got the skill three. This is three round burst. What else can we do to do more damage? What else can we do to make this one massive nuke, I wonder? Well, we can give ourselves might, can't we? So three round burst. Fire three bullets that grunt might if they hit. So now we've got tons of vulnerability on him. We've given ourselves nine might, which is not a shabby amount of might. Don't forget, we're a, we're a thief that uses initiative as well, right? So we can just spam this to give ourselves, like, tons of might very, very quickly. There you go. We're at 25 might. Uh, we've given ourselves all of this might. They're vulnerable. They're immobed. We could have just stolen protection and stuff from them. And then finally, we're going to use the nuke, which is skill four, as you can see here. So this is, there's a lot going on with the nuke, so watch closely. We're going to fire a shot. That deals a huge amount of damage. The base amount is 1,500, so that's already a very big hit, all right? That's before we crit, that's before all the other modifiers, like close, uh, not close to death, executioner and stuff end up affecting it, right? So we do a massive shot of damage, but then it does increased damage based on our malice stacks. So malice by default gives us 3% more damage per stack. So already we're doing a lot more, but this ability on top of that, does 15% per stack. So that's 15 times 5 on top of, which scales on a massive 1,500 damage hit in the first place. And when we're kneeling, we can do it at 1,500 range at double velocity after doing all this other stuff on these other skills to prime someone for the attack. So I will show you how this works. We're going to mark the character, the enemy. Um, we're going to stack ourselves some might. We're going to watch for our malice to max out, okay? So we've got to bide our time for this just a little bit. But here we go. We're going to make sure we've got the initiative for Death's Judgment. There's our max, and we're going to Death's Judgment. Boom. And we get 13,000. And this is, you know, this is in PvP right now. And this is without setting up all the other stuff. I'm, I don't know whether we've got Scholar Runes and stuff on. A massive hit of 13,000 damage that we can pinch at someone at 1,500 range. That is the way that the rifle works. It's all built around going for this big Death's Judgment shot. Uh, so there are more things to talk about with Death's Judgment, though. Um, when we use Death Judgment, it's going to apply a lot of reveal to us. Again, I think counterplay is very important on this spec. And so if you get sniped and you manage to survive, if they didn't quite work it out well enough, uh, they're going to be revealed. So they are a thief. They can use hide in shadows. They can use combo fields. They can use lots of stuff to try and stealth. And they've got lots of mo mobility still available to them. They could be running rifle shortbow. And there's never really been a rifle shortbow build in Guild Wars 2, and there will be in, in, in Path of Fire. Uh, so they can try and get away with all these different things, but they're going to be revealed after using Death's Judgment. So there you go, that's the way that the rifle works. Uh, pretty fun one to explain. Uh, I like the synergy that, and the way it sort of all builds up to that four and the way it all works. Uh, maybe you guys fi might find it a little bit more limiting. Again, if you're not into the idea of sniping and being ranged, then rifle might not be so much for you. But again, I've seen a lot of builds of people running like pistol, pistol, dead eyes, and there's like a crazy condi dead eye build with lots of uh, poison that goes out. It's all, it's all fairly interesting. 
So let's look at the utility skills. I already mentioned to you guys that these are cantrips. Um, cantrips are pretty fun. Uh, and they all essentially function as stronger versions when you're against someone who has got a lot of malice on them and sort of they're your marked target. So first of all, let's look at the heal. We heal ourselves and then the more malice we have, uh, we heal for even more and we condi cleanse. So this can be five conditions ripped off of us uh, with our five malice here and uh, quite a big heal. What's quite striking about this is uh, Thief's never had a particularly good cleanse, right? It's got Hide in Shadows, which will cleanse like Burn and, and some of the offensive stuff, but not too much, right? Um, now we actually get more reliable cleanse and you get some pretty good cleanse on Malicious Restoration there. So we might see some use on this. That does fill a hole that the Thieves haven't had before. Moving on, we have Shadow Gust. And by the way, one of these utilities is very techy and I'm excited to show you guys. Um, Shadow Gust. We're going to knock away nearby foes with a burst of shadow magic, and then afterwards stealth ourselves. Uh, so this is push everyone away, hide, and get the hell out of there. If it hits our marked target, then they'll be launched instead. So I'll show you this light golem is going to be launched, and we're going to try and run away. So we're going to launch him. I was in the middle of an auto attack there. But we, uh, we launch him with the shadow magic, we're stealthed, and then we can uh, get the hell out of dodge. Uh, here we have blinding shadow. We immobilize our target after a very short delay, and if they were marked, then they'll be knocked down instead, which is, of course, quite strong. In some ways, I, I think in PvP, sometimes immobilize can be stronger than knock down. People are quicker to stun break than they are to cleanse sometimes. Anyway, conditions that get applied by the skill last for a lot longer for every stack of malice that we have. So that's actually a very long immobilize. That's like a, a three-second immobilize if we have a lot of malice. Um, and again, this is... Uh, well, actually, no, it's not, because... Because then it becomes a knockdown, doesn't it? That's curious. Well, anyway, it's also a ton of Vuln, right? So if you notice here, this is 1,200 ton of Vuln. So this is another way to maybe, without using initiative, stack your vulnerability. Uh, or maybe if you're not even running uh, rifle. It's also a projectile-less way of stacking vulnerability. There's always the fear that, you know, double tap or, um, or your autos are being mitigated in some way. And uh, you can sort of bypass that with Blinding Shadow. And then we have Shadow Flare. We throw an orb of, and I really like this one, we throw an orb of shadow magic that damages nearby foes wherever it lands, and then we can swap with it. So this is just a rolling damage tick, as you can see here. That's the shadow orb. It will last four seconds. It's pretty strong. And then we can swap with it, and we can blink into where it is. Oh, I did it ever so slightly late. Too late. Um, so we'll blink to where that was. That's a way, that's a method of engaging or even getting away. A lot of people won't think of this, but if you're uh, if you're crouched down shooting, say that elementalist over there, you can potentially throw the shadow orb behind you, go for the snipe and reveal yourself and make you know make it apparent that you're there, and then quickly blink behind you to get out of dodge. Right, using the shadow orb. And what's cool about this as well that you've got to think about is this doesn't just teleport us to the orb. It swaps us with the orb. So the orb is now up on that hill. So if someone is trying to pursue us, they kind of have to go through this little damaging AoE that you've just put on the ground. So I really like that. So uh, hopefully you can see why that's got some interesting stuff. It's a shadow swap there. Uh, and then so we have the elite and we have one final utility. Both of these are very uh, curious to me. So first we have Mercy. Mercy is a bit like that uh, that Weaver utility that felt like it was much more about shifting the mechanics a bit. And uh, Mirage had one a bit like this as well. I think even Soul Beast had one a bit like this. They've put it in a few places. So Mercy, Cantrip, cancel your current mark and instantly refresh your F1, your Dead Eyes mark. And then if you did this when you had you know a lot of malice, then you can gain a ton of initiative out of it. This is also a stun break. So this is an ability for, let's say I've decided I want to nuke this golem and I really care about nuking this golem. But then at the last second, he's done something to put himself out of range. A buddy of his has arrived. This is a way of us saying, all right, no, we've made a mistake taking out this, this kill contract. This light golem's no longer a good target for us. Um, I've got all of this malice. I don't want it all to go to waste. Okay, fine, we will pop mercy. And Mercy will allow us to immediately gain a ton of initiative, but also pick our new target very quickly and go straight into Malice on them and start rebuilding the Malice. So, uh, you know, a very techy choice, right? And it feels a lot like, like they've done more of this for the Gen 2 stuff. I find uh, these guys are very curious. They'll either see a lot of play or they'll be uh, kind of falling flat. Also a stun break. And it's fun to see the new uh, resource... Malice interacting with the old resource initiative and seeing them work together uh, on this class that now feels kind of very weird to play with all these like little dots of resources that we're going to be playing around and bundling with. And uh, so now let's talk about the elite. 
Now, I love the leap for one simple reason. That it's counterplay on top of counterplay on top of counterplay. And all of it has slowly crept into Guild Wars 2 over the past several years. So let's do it. It is Shadow Meld. So this is an am ammunition based. 45 second recharge, but we can double tap it. And it's stealth. So if we double tap it, it's going to be 6 stealth for us. Well, it's on a 5 second cooldown between the two. So we can't actually double tap it. This is a stealth for you. Um, but what's really crazy about it is it removes Revealed. Remove Revealed and stealth yourself. You might think, wow, is that an Elite? Yes, that's an Elite. Reveal has been something that slowly has been added to the game a bit more and a bit more and a bit more as a way of counterplaying too much stealth. And now the Dead Eyes have a way to counterplay that counterplay. I wonder how far down the rabbit hole we will go, guys. But so this removes Revealed and it stealths us. Uh, the PvE nerd in me is a bit curious about some of these PvE encounters where they put Reveal on you and you're never supposed to be able to stealth in them. I wonder whether Shadow Meld will work at all there. Typically speaking, thieves don't like removing that Revealed anyway because that Revealed they take advantage of with their... Uh, uh, critical strikes maybe it is one of them gives them loads of power uh, when they are revealed and people tend to enjoy having that on them But uh, but yeah, so we can remove that revealed So remember when we use our rifle for death's judgment that reveals us We shouldn't be able to stealth and leave not if we're running this cantrip though. We can stealth and then we can try and uh, bail out as fast as possible. Now that's a lot of high power cooldowns that we have to use all at once to try and make that work out. But um, I think it's a very fun way of uh, dealing with things. Now I've just noticed, by the way, I was a little bit mistaken with how the rifle works. It's not a it's not a trait thing. So while we're crouched, the skill four is our big nuke. While we're stood up, it's not a nuke at all. While we're stood up, it's actually slightly different. It's death's retreat. And so what this actually does is this blinks us backwards and safely. So the idea is we do all of this stuff to build up the big nuke, okay? We, we use our three round burst, we get all of this stuff. Then once we execute the big nuke, we stand up and we quickly blink back, right? Uh, and I got no valid path to target. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that Guild Wars 2 in a nutshell? We'll do this again. It's actually a huge blink back, as you can see there. So it will be revealed by the big nuke. But, uh, and, and they're going to see us, and they're probably not going to be happy with us, and they're going to shake us, us, but we at least have Death's Retreat. And this is an option to get out without using, say, the Shadow Orb, or uh, using Shadow Melds to get into uh, Stealth and uh, try and get away with that method. So, that's basically the way that they've got all of this built. And I think, uh, generally speaking, that's the uh, the dead eye in a nutshell. Uh, the, some of the other abilities while we're stood up are slightly different. So, for example, Skirmish is shot, is Swiftness and Cripple stood up, and then it becomes Immobilize, Fury and Vigor when we're kneeling down. And I think the Double Tap is maybe slightly different to Three Round Burst. But, uh, generally speaking, uh, that's the way the rifle is, and it plays between standing up and kneeling down. Um, so, that leaves us then, really, with just the traits to go over. And the traits can affect more than a lot more than just running the rifle. Do consider running running daggers on this and you get all the, the extra modifiers from Dead Eyes Mark and stuff uh, and all of that could be useful. There's a lot of options. Like I said, I've seen people running dual pistols and many different fun things. Uh, so let's uh, head on over to the traits and see what we've got. Let's first take the middle line and look at the miners. So first we get Dead Eyes Mark and the new Dead Eyes uh, uh, stolen abilities. Next we have Ren Wing Gaze or Ren Wing Gaze. Dead Eyes Mark will recharge if our mark is defeated and we gain regeneration during this recharge. So this is a miner, right? So everyone will have this. Think of this like the Guardians who get a refresh on their F1 every time the, a target dies. That's the same here. So if we successfully finish our contract like that golem, we immediately get the F1 back. Do you see how I just cast it? And now I can cast it again. And we immediately get it back, right? And now we're going to kill this guy. And we can swap targets straight away back to this light golem. So this is a huge part of what it's like to be a dead eye. You might think, oh god, you can only pink w p pinch one person off again and again and again. Well, no, actually, you can continuously keep cycling through. As long as the targets are dying, and in a team scenario, other people can help you kill these targets quickly, you can quickly flip between target to target. Now, you have to specifically call each one out that you want to kill. So it's still that very focused kind of uh, style. But you can bounce between targets in these big fights in, I think, quite a satisfying way. In a kind of a ranged version of what we're already used to doing as very backstabby single target, uh, you know, when we pick off tails of people in World vs. World and so on. So that's uh, the first minor, Renewing Gaze. Then we also have Perfectionist. Uh, so here we gain boons when our Manus hits maximum stacks. Uh, I'll probably demonstrate this best over on the Invulnerable Golem down here, right? So here uh, we've hit our Manus. And we're just going to slowly let this charge. I guess I'll auto attack so that it builds as fast as possible. Um, and when it says gain boons, it really means a lot of boons. 
Uh, we already get a lot of fury and stuff, but boom, there's maximum malice, and look at what it just gave us. Ten might straight up, fury, regen, vigor, swiftness, the works. And so that happens when we hit five malice there. Uh, and that is minor also. So really, this is about making Dead Eyes Mark as strong as possible. And um, these are these are little augments that everyone will be able to enjoy. Now, let's talk about the middle line. You will have noticed I've started getting quickness. Now, why is that, you may be wondering. First of all, we've got Iron Sight. Incoming damage from our marked target is reduced. So whoever we've chosen, we said, I'm going to kill you. That person has a harder time killing us in the first place, as long as it's that specific person. We can only have one person marked at once, so if there's a group of people hounding us, we're very vulnerable. But at least to that one person, we can get a little bit more of an advantage. That's Iron Sight. Next, we have Unforgiving. Our first attack will stun if it's a newly marked target. I don't know if you guys noticed this earlier, but we'll mark this guy. And when we attack, he gets stunned. And again, that's something that helps you to engage on someone who might be quite far away. And you get that stun so that now they're stood there for a second and you can maybe close the gap a bit more before you then kneel down uh, if, if they're in complete kite mode. And bouncing around with the uh, renewing gaze trait, you can imagine you can actually put out quite a lot of stun. As long as targets are dying, it's like quick little stuns on new targets very frequently. If there's something about playing Deadeye that feels very smooth to me. So, uh, so yeah, we've got that on Unforgiving. And then lastly, we have be quick or be killed. This is what people have been using with other weapon sets uh, to great effectiveness. Uh, like permanent, like 25 might and tons of quickness while they use unloads on pistol pistol. Gain quickness when we mark a foe and our power and precision are increased while under quickness. So for PVE quickness, uh, end game PVE, quickness is kind of like a given. And certainly with the Gen 2 specs, they give out so much quickness. It's a given that we'll have it on us. This is really strong. 200 power, 200 precision. I will happily take that uh, no matter what weapon set I'm running on, but also it means that every time we mark someone, we stun them, and then we also give ourselves quickness so that we can quickly, you know, unload like our double tap or whatever, and then immediately pick another person, and we get our quickness back. You'll notice, super importantly, this Grandmaster trait does not have an internal cooldown on it. So as, as, as long as we can continuously refresh Dead Eyes Mark, we can give ourselves obscene amounts of the stuff, and then you can uh, supplement it with some of the core thief stuff, like, like haste, for example, and some. All right, let's take the uh, bottom line and see how we're looking here. We've got one in the chamber. This is uh, the trait that affects our new utility skills, cantrips. When we cast a cantrip, we gain a new random stolen skill. This is actually a way I can demonstrate to you guys, I suppose, some more of the stolen skills. Let's go over to, once again, the indestructible golem. I don't know why I'm moving away from him so much. Uh, so the trick with this is it does require a marked target, which uh, is important because they don't want you to be able to get these F2 abilities without actually being in combat with someone. So that's why it requires a marked target. But now that we've got this guy marked, if we use our heal, we get a new stolen skill. So we've got steel defenses here. Gain Aegis and poison our marked target. We can give ourselves Aegis. Very nice. Uh, let's use another cantrip. And we get another stolen skill. We get steel strength. Gain might and weaken your marked target. So yeah, like they're all like a boon and a condi kind of thing, I think is the way that they work. On this one, we got steel durability. Uh, we gain protection and put vulnerability on there. Here we can use meld in shadows. And we got another one, steel time. Gain quickness and slow your target. And share that out. And uh, as you can see, so we'll, we'll see that obviously in the, in the traits in just a second there. So, uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's the way that our stolen skills work. And that's one in the chamber. Next, we have Peripheral Vision, and this is what you just saw in action. Solon skills apply their boons to allies near you, and they apply their condies to foes around your marked target. So you now get a little bit more of AoE capacity. We were just sharing out quickness, we were just sharing out protection, and so on. And then lastly, we have um, a, a trait I've talked about a lot over these videos, and it's nice to finally get to it. We have Fire for Effect. Hitting our marked target with a stolen skill grants might to allies around our mark. If we're outside of the range threshold, then might is granted to allies around us. So uh, what, what, what's the deal here, right? If I'm on sword and I go and attack this target golem, what this means is if I mark and I use this stone skill, it gives me might in a circle around me. But the devs know that most, or a lot of dead eyes, aren't going to be in melee like this. They're not going to be in melee at all. They're going to be all the way back here, right? Because they're going to be on their rifle. We've got no line of sight. So they want the trait to work for people who are back here as well. So instead of just giving might around the marked target, they also have you give might around you. Which is what we just saw there. 
and it's a huge amount of might. You guys might have heard of this. This is the 100 might trait. Seriously, this can put out 100 might in a single activation of it. Because let's look. This is 10 might for you and your allies, all right? But it also affects 10 targets. So if you put this on 10 targets, you've just pumped 100 might out on no internal cooldown right there and right then. Now, don't forget you can combine that with this cantrip trait that gives you new stolen skills every time you pop the new utility. So this is just insane might generation across a huge number of players and allows Dead Eyes to fill that role, I think, that Phalanx Strength Warriors were before. Unless there's some kind of internal cooldown or weird thing that I'm not noticing here, it actually seems really easy too. Uh, anything that hits 10 targets, people in raids are going to be very interested in. And uh, it's nice to see that they did that on the Dead Eye. Um, it gives a little bit more of that sort of offensive group support that I think will help it secure a place. Any kind of 10 target thing the devs do is very rare. I mean, look through all of these videos, how often have we seen it, if at all. Uh, so 10 targets is pretty big, and that's fire for effect. And then last but not least, we have the top line. And you notice as I selected this, our skills changed a little bit here. Uh, because it's, we're actually going to affect our kneeling in a second. So let's see this here. First of all, we've got Revealed Malice. This makes us feel okay about getting revealed. Being revealed, when we're stealthed, grants malice and might. So you see how the trait says specifically being revealed from a stealthed state grants malice and might? What they mean by that is they don't want you to reveal yourself by using Death's Judgment. Uh, they want this to be, if you've been caught while you were stealthed, and, you know, a, a, a scrapper ran over and pulsed his gyro near you, or whatever, any of those things happened. Uh, if that happens, you can turn that into a bit of a perk, and you can gain malice. Um, but you will only gain it if you have the target marked, which I think is a bit naff. Like, a lot of the time, if you're running away um, and you're stealthed, you might not have someone marked anyway at the time. But, uh, and then it won't give you that malice. But, so, maybe a bit of a weird uh, trait on this one. But I like the idea. Next, we have Sniper's Cut. Uh, we have, sorry, Silent Scope. So, Neil, okay, is our skill 5. And I've already shown you how that works. This supercharges the skill 5. Neil becomes a different skill. It is now known as Sniper's Cover. And Sniper's Cover has increased initiative cost. So this is one of those fun things they've been doing a lot with the new specs. Uh, there's a drawback sometimes to a trait as well as a payoff. So it now costs more to go prone. But when we do it, we get stealth. Also, rifle skill critical hit chance has been increased while we're kneeling by 20%. So we get another 20% chance to crit. That's fury. That's like permanent fury that fury can stack on top of as long as we're kneeling. That's so strong, guys. And it, we can start immediately stealth. So you can dip in and you're stealthed. And then you can climb out, by the way, and stay stealthed. So the ammo mechanic on this, right, with the charges, you can actually, like, quadruple tap Sniper's Cover to stack some stealth on yourself. And that might be useful in some places, but then once the ammunition mechanic's up, you can't sort of abuse it any further. So it's not like permanent stealth, uh, which it would be if the ammo mechanic wasn't there, and you can see how they've used that to their advantage on that one. Uh, but yeah, so you can actually, you can crouch down and immediately stealth. A lot of the guys in PvP at the moment I've been see seeing have been using and taking advantage of this. Uh, it, the thing is, it comes against some pretty strong uh, other optional uh, abilities for you. Specifically, I really like Unforgiving. So, uh, in fact, I really like a lot of these traits. I generally feel like Thief has always had good traits. And finally, the last Grandmaster. Maleficent 7. And this... Oh boy, this. Increases maximum malice stack count. The time between malice gain is reduced. So we gain malice quicker. I don't know why they didn't word it that way. Perfectionist, which was this minor, remember? And we get all of these boons uh, when we hit max stacks. Well, that's been buffed. Seven is our new cap of malice. So that takes longer to get to. But also, when we get there, we'll get all of those boons and we will be healed at the same time. So it's we get compensated for the fact it's harder to get towards perfectionist. But increased Malix cap of seven. Why is that so good, Winter Potatoes? Well, because remember, we've got all these modifiers, right? So that's another 6% extra damage we can do uh, just from this on any weapon. That's another 30% damage on Death's Judgment. So here, I will show you a Death's Judgment doing all the top line. Um, and everything on the top line means we also get, you know, the, the extra crit chance um, from being kneeled down. So watching our Malice grow. Malice is almost done. There's all of our boons. We've got 22 might. We've got fury. Boom. We snipe. Our snipe went an extra 2,000 extra damage just here in the PvP lobby from that. And then we can help. We can do another one immediately after because it's an initiative cost, right? So, uh, so yeah, it's uh, really quite strong. 
And uh, this actually is what I originally, when I first played Dead Eye, had on by default, and I saw the seven malice. So everything you've seen in this video so far that was all about five malice is actually seven now. So the heal, right? The heal before was five condies removed and healing per condi. Well, actually now, if we cap at seven malice and pop this, then that's seven conditions cleansed. And that's a lot of conditions cleansed with a huge heal on top as well. That becomes like a necromancer's consumed conditions, essentially, as long as you have the manus on there, which is a very strong uh, heal skill, especially for the vitality uh, value that we have here on a thief. So, uh, so yeah, there you go, guys. That is all of the traits. That's Maleficent 7. Um, there's some really fun build crafts you can do on this. There's some interesting synergies. Uh, Basilisk Venom is one I was very early looking on at. Basilisk Venom means you stun on attack, but it also makes the attacks that are venomed, and I think it's, what is it? Is it do you get two venoms on this now by default? I think you do, don't you? Oh no, it's just one. Maybe there's a trait for it. Anyway, it makes your attacks unblockable. So, um, if you think, oh, this looks okay, but Death's Judgment, uh, it's probably going to get blocked, or it's going to get mitigated, or it's going to get reflected, or whatever, just run Bassy Venom instead. So have Bassy Venom, and now it's an unblockable Death's Judgment. And if that doesn't sound scary uh, to you, then you really need to reassess what you know about this game, because that is very scary. The thing is, though, by taking this elite, you obviously can't run Shadow Meld. You're more vulnerable after you go for the snipe. It depends how many eggs you want to put into that one basket. Sure, there's lots of other fun synergies and builds that will be available. I'm going to be keeping my eye out for them once Path of Fire itself is out. And there you have it, guys. If you have a very fun uh, synergy or build or something you've been doing on Deadeye, be sure to leave it down in the comments so that everyone can chat about it and see all the other cool stuff that was going on. And I will see you next time for the very last of the Elite Specialization presentations. Number nine, the Spellbreaker, who actually was my original favorite. I'll see you soon.